Hey, Tessa, you're muted. Thanks so much, Nicoria. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm excited to be crafting with all of you today. We are going to be making these fun sunflower weavings, and we're going to learn how to weave in the round. So all of this is going to be woven in a circular pattern, and we're going to add some fun details like our little leaves here that have some stitching, and you can add a little um, hanger on the back if you want to, so you can hang it as a wall-mounted piece of artwork. And so I'm gonna go through all of the supplies we're going to be using and we'll get started. So firstly, we are going to be using a sunflower template. Um, this was a printable template that you um, should have printed out already. If you didn't, you can definitely draw your own sunflower today as well. Um, if you are gonna draw your own sunflower, uh, we wanna make sure that we have an odd number of little points in between our petals. I'm gonna go through all of those, but just if you get drawing early, um, we want to make sure we have an odd number. So for instance, I have 13 different little points in between my petals, and that's what we're going to need in order to make the weaving work. Um, so, or if you've already printed out your template, then you're good to go. And then we're going to be using a, uh, some construction paper. So I have some yellow construction paper here that we'll be tracing our template on. I have some green foam sheet. Uh, this is what we use to make the leaves on the sunflower. And you could also use paper if you don't have foam. And then we're gonna be using yarn. So you can use any color yarn you might want. Um, for our little example here, I did like a brown center followed by orange and then yellow. So I have a brown yarn with a little metallic. I have some orange yarn and yellow yarn. And then lastly, I have a little bit of green yarn that we can use to stitch the center of our leaves. And to do that, I'm gonna be using my Creatology little sewing needles here. And these needles are great, they're plastic and they're not super sharp, but they are sharp enough to uh, create a hole or puncture the foam or paper. And then they have a pretty large eye at the top so that they work really well with yarn. And then lastly, um, or not quite lastly, but we're gonna use some embroidery thread as well to make our actual loom part here. As you can see on the back, we have all of this embroidery thread to create our round loom. Uh, you can use yarn as well or any other string would work. And then a pair of scissors and just some scotch tape. So I just have some basic tape here that we're going to use to tape our yarn to start with. And I think that's everything we're going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and flip our camera around and we can get started. All right. So our first step, we're going to move some of this yarn out of the way. And our first thing we're going to do is cut out our template. So if you are not using a sunflower template today, then you can definitely draw your own. And as I was saying in the beginning, we want to make sure that we have an odd number. So when we're doing our round weaving to create the woven pattern, you go over and under every other string. And don't worry, we're going to go through all those steps. Um, but you want to make sure you have an odd number. So as we count our petals here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's gonna be an odd number. We wanna make sure that what, however many petals you're drawing, that you are going to be using an odd number. So you don't have to do exactly 13, you could do 15 or 19 or nine, um, but make sure that you're doing an odd number, that way your weaving will still work. All right, so if you are using the template, we're gonna go ahead and cut that out. And if you are drawing your own, you can draw it directly onto your yellow construction paper as well. You don't have to draw it on white first. This is just the printed template. And then we're going to trace the template onto our yellow construction paper. And as we're getting started here, if any of you have any questions regarding the supply list um, or want to share maybe what you're doing at home, if it's a little bit different than what the example showed, I'd love to know. So put it in the Q&A and let Nicoria and I know what you're up to.
And we're making sunflowers today. So that's uh, the you know, inspiration for this little template to look like a sunflower, but you could really make any sort of flower you want to. Um, and after learning this woven uh, technique in a circular pattern, you can also just do round weavings also. It doesn't have to be a flower. It could just be a plain circle and that would work also. All right, so move this trash out of the way here. And we have our little template cut out. And to do to use the template, we do need to trace the template. So I'm gonna grab a marker. And you can use a marker, a colored pencil, a crayon. Uh, anything would work. So we're going to take our template and lay it on top of our construction paper. And then using a marker, I'm just going to trace the outline. And so I'm just going to hold down the template. And because this template has all these smaller pieces, sometimes it's easier to kind of hold down each little petal as you trace. And if you are tracing your template with me, if you get marker on the template on the white sheet, don't worry about that. We're going to, we're not using that afterward. Um, so if your marker kind of skips over your template and you get a little bit on there, we're only going to be using the yellow portion. Okay, so once I've outlined all of my little petals there, you can see we've got the same thing now on our yellow sheet of paper, and we're going to cut that out. So again, if you drew your own, you might already be done cutting this out. but just bear with us. As soon as we're done cutting out our sunflower here, we'll get started on actually setting up the little round loom and then get to weaving. And as I'm cutting out my sunflower here, I'm not too worried about cutting away all of my pin marks. There's a little bit there. I can flip this over and any of the outline marks won't be visible. Since the weaving's only on the front of the sunflower, 
the back can be against the wall. And so if you have any little marker lines or uh, anything like that, you won't have to worry about seeing that. All right, and we're almost done cutting out our sunflower. There we have it. Set these aside. And like I was just saying, I have a little bit of my black marker lines. You can always cut those off if you want to, but you can also just flip it over and all of those disappear. All right, so next we're going to actually start making the circular loom that we're going to be able to weave in and out of. So we're going to take some embroidery thread. And if you don't have embroidery th thread, you can use um, yarn as well. You can use uh, any sort of string will work. But I'm just going to pull a little bit off and I'm going to start by flipping over. So I want the back side of my sunflower up. And I'm going to take a piece of tape. It doesn't have to be a big piece, just an inch or two. And I'm going to tape the tail of my embroidery thread or yarn into the center of the back side of my flower. And then we're going to hold on to our embroidery thread. And you can flip your sunflower over. And I'm going to pull my thread down in between two petals. And then about straight down. It's not going to be exactly straight since we're using odd number of petals. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this side, and only one, two, three, four, five, six petals on the other. But you want to make sure it's about in the center. And then so you're going to pull it down into the center of the bottom petals. And then we're going to go wrap it around the back and come up to the other to the next two petals and then back down and to create like a little X. And we're gonna do that over and over again, all the way around our sunflower. So you can see on the back here, going around and over to the next petals. And kind of rotate this a little bit. And again around. And then once you get to this level, we've got one here. We're just going to go ahead and come back up through the same one and bring it down. And then we can cut this off. All right, so if we're at this point here, we're actually going to take this tail that's left. Instead of coming back around, just follow over to the next petal and bring it up. And then I'm going to take my tail of my, of my embroidery thread and I'm going to go underneath this whole center and back down. So I'm just gonna kind of pick up and pull my thread down. I'm gonna do that one more time to end this portion of the weaving here. So once you get to this point here where we've got just one left, we're just going to wrap it over to the next petal, bring it up, I'm going to take this tail and I'm going to bring it underneath all of these little sections of my thread and then just kind of tighten it a little bit so that everything is in a nice little neat pattern. And this one I'm just going to take my same thread and overlap it and then we can tape it off on the back again.
So at this point, it's how your sunflower should look. So we've got a nice little center here and we should have a piece of embroidery thread coming in between each petal. And then we can start actually weaving. So from this point, this is basically just the, the base or the loom of your weaving. And so we're going to be able to take our yarn here and you can do a couple different options. If you don't have um, a needle that you can use like these plastic needles, you can just push the yarn through without a needle as well. So if you want to use a needle like I am, I'm going to take my yarn, I'm going to cut off a good chunk of it. You can also kind of wind this into a little ball if you want to, all this extra. So I'm just gonna cut off a portion, a couple yards. We're gonna be switching colors if you want to, and you can always add more. And I'm going to double up on this first yarn because it's really thin. But if you're using thicker yarn, you can just use the single strand. I'm going to push these two ends through the eye of my needle. And again, if you aren't using a needle, you don't have to use a needle. It makes it a little bit easier to go in and out of your um, strands that we just attached to our sunflower. But if you don't want to, or you don't have a needle that works with your yarn, it's not necessary. Okay. So now we've got all this yarn here. So I got a couple yards or so, and we're going to start. You can pick any area of your loom to start. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're going in the same direction every time. So once we pick one, I'm going to start underneath. So I'm going to put my needle or my yarn underneath one piece. And then I'm going to go over the next one and then back under the following. You see I'm under, over, under. I'm going to do that all the way around. So we're going to go over, under, over, under. And then I'm just going to start to pull this through a little bit so that my tail isn't quite so long. And again, we're going all the way around. So now we have under, over, under, over, under. We're going to do this multiple, multiple times to complete our weaving. So if you are just getting to finishing your loom or you aren't quite sure yet, just keep following along. I'm pulling my tail almost all the way. This is always the most challenging part. Once we set our center, then the rest of the time is really pretty easy. We're just going to weave in and out of all of these little pieces of embroidery thread. So I've got this little tail here. I want to make sure that I'm keeping it if I'm over here, that I'm under. And we're going to kind of pull our other tail out. And we're just going to kind of smush this little tail up underneath. Being that we're not taking it off of this little loom we've created, we don't have to really worry about this coming un untangled or undone. So we don't have to knot it or make it really secure. We're just going to kind of push our little tail underneath the other yarn and it'll get stuck in there, which is exactly what we want. And this little tail will just continue to get more and more tight as we continue weaving. 
Okay, so as we go around, we're just gonna continue doing the same thing throughout the whole sunflower now. So we've got our first little round here and you wanna make sure that we're doing the same thing. So if we are finishing this with being over, we're gonna go under and then over. So you can see we're starting to go the opposite one of the, of the one before. So this, the first little strand that we pulled under, now this next strand is gonna go over and then under. And that's gonna create almost like a little checkerboard pattern. It is going to keep all of this woven tightly in there. And if we are over here, we're gonna go under, over, under. And we're just gonna keep doing that same pattern all the way around. So as I'm getting a little bit more in here, you can start to see where it's going every other one. And that's where you can move this around in different directions. It doesn't matter how you are holding this. You just wanna make sure that your yarn is continuing in the same direction. So I've been going in a counterclockwise direction and you just wanna keep doing that even if you switch to a different yarn. And that way your um, yarn won't come undone. Sometimes your yarn might get a little bit stuck in our fancy little petals here. Just give it a soft little tug. So, and every time you just want to look closely at the center and make sure before you go to the next one, if this one is under, this one's going to be over, then back to under, back to over, back to under. And you can start to see now that how this little, our original smaller little pieces of our embroidery thread are kind of tucked in between and you start to create that little checkerboard. It takes a moment to get there. Once you get a couple of layers in there, then you'll start to see that. And depending on how thick of yarn you're using today will depend on how long your weaving might take. Uh, since I'm using a thinner yarn in the center of this, just because I like this little metallic brown yarn to be the center of my sunflower, then it's gonna take me a little bit longer to kind of get it started. And then we'll switch over to another color. So we're gonna do a few rows of our brown. And again, you can use any color that you might want. So you don't have to be using brown. If you didn't, didn't have brown handy, that's fine. And we're continuing with our over, under, over, under. And I like to do a couple at a time like that, do maybe three or four pieces of yarn go on, over and under and then pull all my yarn through. You can see once we've got our tail all tied in there now, 
and we're getting a few more layers going, the speed starts to pick up a little bit as you get the hang of the over and under. And if you were to drop yours or you got up for a moment and weren't sure where you left off, just look back at a couple of your past ones and look, okay, this one is on top where this one's under. So that means if this one's on top, this next one has to be under and then we can go back under. So under, over, under, over. All right, I'm just gonna do like another little layer or two of the brown and then we can switch over to a new color and show you how to do that if you want to switch to other colors. It's gonna be pretty similar to the way we started. Uh, you can kind of just pick up exactly where you left off and we're just gonna tuck our tails under. Again, since we're leaving all of ours on our sunflower base, we don't have to worry about um, cutting it off. In traditional weaving, you end up cutting your finished woven artwork off of the loom that you've made. But since our loom is half of our artwork, we don't have to worry about that. Give you a little bit closer view all of this. And so you see the last round of which one's over and under. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim this off. So I'm going to cut my yarn. And I just left like an inch or so there. Probably can cut a little bit more even off if you wanted to, but I'm going to cut that off and then we can push it under with our needle or with your finger. So I'm just going to kind of take my yarn and with my finger, just kind of push it up underneath all this area that we've just wove together. I'm just kind of tucking it like we did with our initial tail. And then we can start with our next color. So I'm gonna to switch to an orange so I'm going to take a couple of yards off of my orange. And again, you can double up if you want to, depending on how thick your yarn is um, or how many layers you want to do. Got a little tangle in mine. So I'm just going to, again, double my yarn up and I'm going to take my two tails and then I'm gonna push them through the eye of my needle. I'm just kind of holding them tight together and then pulling that through. And if you are not using a needle, you don't have to, you can just skip that step. You can definitely just take the end of your yarn and weave it that same way without a needle. So to start, we're gonna do similarly to the way we started originally and I'm gonna kind of pick up where we left off. And I'm going to start with going, so if this last round here is an over, so I'm gonna start with going under and then over. So just look at where you left off, I'm gonna go under, over, under, over, under, over. And I'm gonna pull this around a little bit to get where my tail needs to be.
And then just like we did with the last little tail, I'm just gonna take this little edge of my yarn and kind of pull it in tight and just push it underneath the center. And I'm not tying a knot or adding any glue or uh, anything like that. Once, as we weave more and more, it really locks it in place. And so you don't have to worry about that coming undone. Just make sure that you push that underneath and then we can keep weaving. And you're just gonna continue going around, over and under. I always like to make sure when we kind of cover, come around where we just locked in that little tail, just give it an extra little tug, make sure to lock that in place. for weaving, I like for this sort of size yarn, I'm using a couple different sizes, of course, but in the first, the brown is really thin. And then this orange is pretty traditional size of um, the width of my yarn, but I still like to double it up. I think that it gives it a kind of a fun braided look. It's a little bit more um, layered than having multiple pieces of yarn in one layer. But again, you might be using really chunky yarn and so you don't need to do that. Um, it's totally up to you. For the second color of orange, I'm just going to go around one last time here, and then we're going to switch to our final shade of yellow. All right. I'm going to do the same thing now. I'm going to take my scissors. <coughs> So sorry about that loud noise, guys. Got my scissors. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and trim my, my tail off. And then using your needle or your finger, just kind of tuck that tail underneath everything we just finished weaving. So your sunflower should be looking similar to this now. And we're gonna switch to our third color of yarn and do a little bit of yellow next. And you're gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna cut off a couple of yards. And again, since this is similar in size to the orange, I mean, I'm going to double layer this up. I'm going to layer it in two, kind of just fold it on top of itself, and then push both of those ends of my yarn into the eye of my needle and pull that through. Okay, and now we're going to start. Uh, about where we left off here. So where I tucked in my tail, I was going un under. So I'm gonna start with going over here. Okay. We're going under, so I'm gonna start going over, under, over, under. So 
So again, we're continuing with the same pattern. I'm just going to pull this through a little bit. And then kind of squish my tail underneath. And then as I come back around where my tail is underneath my hole weaving, we're just going to continue to wrap around it and then give it that extra little tug, kind of holding it in place as we go to make sure that it locks it down. And as our sunflower is growing here, we're filling this in. And you can also choose how much weaving you want to do. If you want to fill all of it in or you want to just do a little center, um, that is always the fun part about making a craft your own is that you get to decide what the outcome looks like. Going around and around our sunflower here. And I'm going to add a little bit more yellow yarn. You see, we're filling this in nicely. We do a couple more yards of yellow. Do the same thing that I've done for each round and double layer my yarn together and push that through the eye of my needle. And then I'm just going to cut off a little bit extra of these tails here. And I'm just going to push the last round of tails underneath. And then we'll continue where we left off. So if we were over here, we're gonna go under and then back over. So whenever you add a new color or like this, if you ran out of yarn and you need to add a little bit more, just pretend as if you are using the same piece and just keep going. As we get here, I'm just gonna tuck that starting tail in. And we're going to continue in our pattern. And we're filling up quickly here. We are almost finished with the weaving portion. We'll be able to add in some leaves. And I'm gonna show you how to stitch leaves if you want to add those. All right, and that 
about finishes up the weaving of my sunflower there. We've got our whole small center, our orange middle rows, and then we've created this beautiful little like basket weave look. And all we're gonna do now is I'm gonna cut off this last little bit of a tail. And we're gonna do just like we did with all of our previous ones. We're just gonna tuck our tails right in and underneath. And because again, this is just staying on our sunflower as is, you don't have to worry about that coming apart. Um, I mean, it definitely could, you could unweave it if you wanted to, but it's just gonna be a pretty little piece of artwork and be easy to hang if you want to. So next we're gonna add some leaves um, or if you are finished with your sunflower and you like it just the way that it is, then you could be done. Um, but let's draw some leaves and cut those out next. So I'm going to take my marker and I'm just going to draw a big leaf here. I'm just doing kind of like a swoop to a little point and then a rounded curve on the other side to kind of meet those two lines together. So I'll do the same sort of line here. And we're gonna cut these out. And for the leaves, I'm using foam sheets. And I think foam sheets are one of the easier things to not only cut, but also um, a plastic needle works really well. So if you are using a plastic needle and you wanna do some stitching, you can really uh, stitch right through this and you don't have to worry about a sharp needle. Um, so you can do it yourself. Cutting out my little leaf shapes here. So not only are you learning how to weave, but we're also going to practice some simple stitches to make our little center of our leaves. So you'll be ready to make all sorts of fun textile based crafts this fall. All right, so we've got two little leaves here and we're going to take our green yarn or if you want to use a different color for your stitches, you can. We don't need a ton. I'm just going to take like a couple of feet off and I'm going to thread this through the eye of my needle again. And for this, I'm not doubling up. So I'm just taking one single strand of my yarn and push it up through the eye of my needle. And then I'm, my other end of my green yarn, I'm going to tie a knot. So I'm going to overlap these two pieces and then tuck this little tail under and through the circle and pull that tight. I'm gonna do a double knot there. So I'm gonna do it again, right on top. So overlap my two pieces of yarn, stick my tail underneath, and through that circle and then pull it tight. I'm gonna cut off the extra bit of this little tail. And then we're going to stitch directly onto our foam sheets. And you want to make sure that whichever side is your favorite to be the front, you're going to want to pierce through the back. So I'm gonna take my needle, I'm going to push up from the back and pull my needle through until it hits that little knot. And then I'm going to go up a little bit, about a half an inch and push my needle through and pull it back down. So now you have your first stitch here. Next, we want to go up about the same distance because what I'm we're going to do is a little something called a back stitch. So I'm going to go under and go to the back side here and go up about a half an inch and push back through to the front. And then we're going to go back through the same hole to connect these two little stitches.
and they're going to do that exact same thing again. So we're going to go up further. And then go back through that same hole to connect our stitches. We're going to go up above where our last hole was. So if this is our last hole, we want to go up about another half an inch and pierce the needle through and pull it to the front. And then go back down to the last hole. And if you're using paper instead of foam to do this, you can definitely do that. Um, your needle should be able to pierce through the paper, even if you're using the Creatology plastic needles like I am, but it might bend your paper a little bit. You can always smooth that up afterward though. So, um, but the foam definitely is the easiest thing to be able to stitch with. There's my little center of my leaf. So now I'm going to tie a knot to finish this off. So I'm gonna flip my leaf over. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go underneath the yarn that's already there. And we're gonna do that one more time. So I'm gonna loop this over and then back under the yarn. And then right when I get to about here, I've created a little circle. I'm gonna push my needle through that circle and then pull this tight to make a little knot. I'm gonna do that one more time. So I have my yarn here. I'm gonna go underneath the stitches on the back side. Start pulling this over. When you get to just a little circle left, take your needle and go back through that circle and then pull it tight. And you've made a little knot. And then you can cut off the rest of your yarn. And there is your cute little stitched leaf. And we're gonna do one more of those leaves. So we're gonna do the same thing again. So I'm going to make a knot on the end of my green yarn. I still have it threaded through my needle. So I'm going to make a little circle overlapping my two pieces of yarn here tucking that tail under and through and pulling it tight. And then we're going to do the same thing. So depending on which way you want your leaf to be the front of, uh, we're going to poke a hole through the back. So I'm gonna to start toward the bottom. I'm gonna push my needle through the back and then pull my yarn all the way through until my knot hits the back. And then we're gonna go up about a half an inch, push through and pull your needle down. And then you can flip it over to look on the other side. You're gonna go up about the same amount of distance and push your needle through And now we're gonna connect these two stitches by putting my needle back through the last hole to make a back stitch. And then we're gonna do that over and over again. So again, I'm gonna now go up further for my last one and push my needle through, pull it to the front and then back down to connect your stitches. There I have 
nice little stitches all the way up the center of my leaf. I'm gonna flip this over and then we're going to tie a knot on the back. So I'm gonna take my needle and go underneath the stitches on the back, pull it to where I have a little circle and then put my needle through that circle and pull it tight. So again, I'm gonna go my needle underneath the stitches this is on the back side of your leaf and pull that until you just have a little circle left and put my needle through that circle and pull it tight. And then we're gonna cut off the excess yarn. And there you have two adorable little stitched leaves ready to go. Okay, so now we have to assemble and with the, you can use any sort of glue to assemble these you want to. I like glue dots the best. And so if you are crafting with an adult, you could use hot glue or um, you could use a liquid glue for this as well. It's just gonna take quite a bit of time for the liquid glue to dry against the foam sheet. Um, so that's why I think a glue dot works really well if you wanted to add leaves on to your sunflower. And so I'm gonna flip my sunflower over. And then I have my little glue dots here and along the bottom of the front of my leaf. So I wanna stick the front onto the back of the sunflower. So we wanna make sure we're putting the glue dots on the front of our leaf. I'm just gonna stick it directly onto these little dots. I'm gonna add a couple. Move three on here. So you see I've got these little shiny dots on the bottom. And then if you want to look at where you want your leaf to be, and then just press down where those little dots are. And we've attached a leaf. We're going to do the same thing with the other one. So again, I'm adding glue dots to the bottom of the front of my little sunflower or my little leaf. I can decide where you want your second leaf to go. If you want to do a little leaf cluster together, or if you want to have them on separate sides of your sunflower, I'm going to put mine together here. So I'm kind of holding them in place where I want it, want it, how I like it to look, and I'm going to flip it over, and then I can press that down. And there's your beautiful new fiber art ready to go. You've got your beautiful textile all woven in the center and lovely little stitch detail. The last thing, if you want to add a little hanger on the back, um, it makes it really easy for you to hang it anywhere then. We're going to do that by taking an extra piece of yarn. So grab any sort of little spare piece you might have. This is a little bit long. We're not going to need this much, but all we're going to do is take a piece of yarn fold it in half like this. And then I'm just going to kind of grab it in the center here. I'm going to tie a knot. Right in the center. I'm going to trim this extra off. So now I have this sort of little bracelet. I've got a knot at the top and then a long piece here. I'm going to flip over my sunflower and taking some tape, I'm just going to tape this piece on to the back. We'll use an extra piece just to be secure. And then you can flip this over. And now you have a little hanger ready to go. And just like that, you finished your very own weaving. I hope that you love the weaving process it takes a minute to get the hang of it, but now that you know how to do it, I'm sure you're going to be weaving all over the place and you'll be ready to go and hang up your own little sunflower art just in time for fall. So thank you so much for crafting with me and learning with Michaels and I can't wait to craft with you guys more soon. Thanks.